When you hear the terms positive and negative feedback, your first instinct might be that positive feedback is good and negative is bad. However, it actually has nothing to do with being good or bad. Negative feedback is called negative feedback because the response negates the original stimulus to keep your body at a predetermined set point. So for example, your blood sugar stays within a range of 80 to 120 milligrams per deciliter. So that is your set point. So if I haven't eaten in a few hours, my blood sugar might start to drop below that set point. So that is going to be the initial stimulus. Luckily, my pancreas is able to detect this change in blood sugar and it releases a hormone. A hormone is just a chemical message that can spread throughout your blood and that hormone instructs cells throughout my body to break down carbohydrates and release it as sugar into my bloodstream. As a result, my blood sugar is gonna rise to be within the normal range. And once it's in the normal range, that is going to cancel out the initial stimulus and end this entire process. So notice that the stimulus and the response are going in the opposite direction. If the opposite were to occur, if I had just eaten, while my blood sugar would start to go up, this would also be detected by my pancreas, which would know to release a different hormone, which would cause cells to take sugar out of my blood and move it into storage, therefore, decreasing my blood sugar and still keeping it within the normal range. In both situations, the stimulus and the response are moving in the opposite direction. So the response is negating, it's canceling out the original stimulus. In the case of positive feedback, the response actually increases the original stimulus which is going to result in an even larger response and create a kind of a snowball effect where the response keeps getting larger and larger until usually some kind of event is going to occur. So the classic example is childbirth. During childbirth, a baby's head is going to start stretching out areas of the uterus and these areas of the uterus have stretch receptors that can send a signal to the brain and the brain knows to release a hormone and that hormone spreads throughout the blood and causes the uterus to contract. The uterus contracting causes the baby to stretch out the uterus even farther and this cycle continues with the uterus contractions getting stronger and stronger until the event occurs, the baby is born. So of the two, negative feedback is more common. The response eliminates the stimulus and prevents an even further response. So this is how your body is constantly able to make small adjustments to keep all of your important variables, things like your temperature, your blood sodium, your blood sugar, all of those things, your body needs to keep it within a specific range and negative feedback helps you keep those things in the range that's going to keep you alive. Positive feedback is much less common and instead of the response negating the stimulus, the response enhances the stimulus, creating an even larger response. So it is a snowball type effect where it's getting larger and larger. Positive feedback is generally gonna create a more rare event. Childbirth, blood clot formation, ovulation, things that do not involve keeping a variable within a narrow range.